Now, scientists today confirm that 2023 was the hottest year on record. And more worrying still, it came close to breaching the limit set by the Paris Climate Agreement. Data from the Copernicus satellite showed that both air and sea temperatures reached new highs, causing deadly droughts, heat waves and floods. Now, it is partly caused by the El Nino effect, which sees oceans warm up. But experts say that it's the man-made emissions which are really the biggest factor, as our science correspondent Martin Stew reports. From devastating wildfires in Greece to deadly floods in Libya, the more our climate changes, the more likely it is we see extremes. 20. 23 saw heat waves and drought right across the globe. Climate change is not a phenomenon of the future. It's here and now, and it is, um, and it's hitting those most vulnerable in every society hardest. Last year was the hottest on record, beating the previous warmest, 2016, by 0.17 degrees Celsius, which is huge when you consider it is a global average spread over an entire year. It's also very close to breaching the limit set by the Paris Climate Agreement to keep global temperature rises below 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. 2023 was 1.48 degrees above that. And for the first time ever, every single day, global temperatures were at least a degree higher than the 19th century. Plus, there were two days, the 17th and 18th of November, where temperatures were more than two degrees warmer. This is the real world impact. Floodwaters from Storm Daniel reached the roof of Petros's house in Greece. It was like a tsunami, he says. In fact, so devastating was the damage, 90% of his neighbours voted to abandon the village, which has stood for 900 years. Petros is tired of living in fear. El Nino, a natural phenomenon which sees changing wind directions warm the Pacific Ocean, has contributed to the heat. But scientists say the biggest driver is greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide and methane emissions rose again last year to a new high. We need to adapt to this new climatological normal. And the reality is when we look back on 2023 in five or 10 years time, it will be cooler than our future climate. So we need to adapt and mitigate to make sure we can get to net zero as quickly as possible. We also saw record high sea temperatures and record low levels of Antarctic sea ice. As for the UK, a cooler summer meant it was only our second hottest year. But we didn't avoid the floodwaters of Storm Babette. And 2024 is already shaping up to be even more challenging. Well, Martin, that's a bit gloomy, isn't it? So we can expect the same direction of travel coming in the coming year. Well, yes, we're not expecting emissions to go down. In fact, we're expecting them to go up. And the impact of El Nino will probably be stronger this year. As a result, the Met Office say it's a very good chance we're going to see temperatures higher than last year and a very good chance we'll break that 1.5 limit as well. Now, that doesn't mean we've breached the Paris Agreement because that's got to be a 20-year average, not one year, but it's, a, it's an ominous precedent. It really is. I think I know the answer to this. Are, are we doing enough to control climate change? Uh, well, I mean, no is a short answer, according to climate scientists, but there have been some steps in the right direction. The COP climate conference was last month. There, nations agreed to transition towards moving away from fossil fuels. Uh, they also talked about tripling renewables and also doubling energy efficiency. The trouble is those things are not legally binding. And what we need to see now is action to follow those words. OK, Martin Stew, thank you.